Good morning, Caitlin, and good morning, Jim. Good morning, Daryl. Morning, Kyle. Morning, Ben. Hey, Daryl. How are you, buddy? Excellent. Good. Good to see you. You too, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Today's going to be a good one, I think. You guys uh, ready for the Easter weekend? We are. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Bring it on. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's exciting, man. It's, uh, it's, it's time to kind of get back to the grassroots a little bit. You know, it's a, a time to reflect back and, and, and kind of just be grateful for what we have. I think, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 to me, it's huge. So. Yeah. With uh, our, I'm sorry. What's that Daryl? No, just with, with everyone home and uh, at the different pace, but it's been really, that's been the, you know, uh, one of the better things that yeah. and everyone will share this. That's what comes out of it. Right. We've got everyone home, everyone, telling people, you know, we don't need to rush, we don't need to rush. The girls will get in a hurry to do something. I was like, what's your rush? <laughs> well, remember now that's, that's the old way, right? <laughs> yeah. That's the old way. It's uh, it's crazy, man. It's, it, it is really, really crazy. Good morning, man. Going? Sorry. <laughs> well, that's okay. Good morning, guys. I'm just glad, I'm just glad to see everybody. You can't see me. I turned mine off. That you know what? That's okay. <laughs> That's not a big deal. You're just glad you're there, Melissa. That's all. Make sure, guys, uh, when I get started here in about one minute, that you guys um, please uh, mute all your devices for me. Cynthia, good morning. Susan, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Bob McCarthy, good morning. I'm trying to admit folks here, which is a good thing. Trying to admit Bob and I can't get him in. Mary Morning, Mr. Rogers. Yes, I got a few people in here today. That's good. I love it. We're going to have a great discussion. And I'm going to, I'm sorry. Good morning. It's Michelle. Can you see that I'm on the call? I can now, Michelle. Thank you. I'm glad you're in I, the room this week. <laughs> you didn't have to access. I didn't have to put in a code this time. No, it's a great thing. Yeah. Um, I think maybe I'm hoping I'm hoping that uh, Zoom is uh, streamlining things a little bit for us. I think I have everybody in. Make sure that everybody mutes, please, as I get started here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started, guys. So, uh, good morning, and I, I first want to thank everybody. Um, who's listening in and uh, I want to make sure that I wish each and every one of you a great Easter weekend with your families. Um, again, I'll go back to something that my son said. He, he talked about uh, the world writing itself. And um, as I get through this presentation a little bit with you guys, um, you're going to, understand a little bit more of how how that happens and um you know i always give credit where credit's due so i was kind of reading a good a good thing uh, by a, a strategic planner uh, by the name of dan sullivan and he talked about scary times and and so some of this is from there and um it's like a scary it's called a scary time success manual um and then i i'm giving you my own little spoof if you will on it and so uh, today we're going to talk about the new way and um, we're living in a time we're living in a scary time and uh, we're living in a time of uncertainty 
um, and what gets us through this time is keeping your mindset strong. And that's a difficult thing to do. And it's a difficult thing to do for a host of reasons. So today I'm going to talk about some strong points. It's going to hit home to a lot of people. Uh, and it did for me. Um, but it's something that you're going to be able to grasp into here. And there's about 10, 11 points that I'm going to talk about that you're going to be able to take with you for the rest of your life. And you've already started to create those, those, entities, if you will, in your life, and you've created them based upon the situation that we've been put in. So you're going to hear me talk today about forgetting a lot of things. Good morning, Bonnie. You're going to hear me talk about forgetting a lot of things, the things I want you to forget about. Okay. So the first thing, make sure you're muted guys, please. Okay. I'll try to Try to mute as I go along here, but I really need for you to mute your devices. Okay. Um, so the first thing I want you to forget about is your own stuff. Forget about your own stuff. That's a hard one. That's a real hard one. I don't mean forget about your home. I don't mean forget about your kids. Okay, It's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is we're living in some really scary times. And the more you focus on your own stuff, meaning your business, your bank account, um, whatever it is, um, the homeschooling, the more anxious, the more nervous you become. And that's a fact, okay? You gotta learn now to stay healthy in your own mind. If you concentrate on only your stuff, you will go crazy, you will spiral, and a whole lot of things will start to happen to you, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Sometimes not in a really good way. Good morning, Kim. So you have to stay healthy in your own mind, okay? Okay. Well, let me give you an example. Mariam, mute your device, please. Let me give you an example. And it could be, I had two conversations this week with the bank and I had conversations with an insurance agent. And I started to ask them about all these forms. And, you know, I actually had a, a, a conversation with uh, a great friend of mine and Tim Rogers with Edward Jones. And we were talking about all these things you know, bank accounts and loans and different things. And finally, I started to ask my insurance agent, how are you doing? How's everything going with you? By the time I got done talking to him, it made my stuff feel so unimportant. By the time I got done talking with Tim, it made my stuff feel so unimportant. By the time I got done talking to the bank who I was frustrated with, and they're taking 200 people just to handle paperwork that they can't figure out. It made my stuff feel unimportant. So you gotta stay healthy in your own mind. You gotta realize at some point, your stuff doesn't matter. There's a lot more going on out there. Look at that bigger picture. So I'm gonna ask you right now, it's just point number one. How much time are you spending reaching out to others and not worrying about your own stuff? Maybe there's a kid who needs help. Maybe there's a business that needs help. Maybe there's a friend who needs help. How much time are you spending reaching out to others and not worrying about your own time? When you do that, when you reach out to others and you have that sense of helping them, you will be able to figure out your own stuff better. You will feel better. You will be more productive in everything that you do. Everything. 
So forget about your own stuff and focus on others. Okay, a lot of you out there have businesses, work in businesses. Um, again, it's really, really scary. You may be trying to work on the next sale, the next investment, what's happening with my restaurant, Whatever you sell or do, you're working on your businesses day and night. Forget about the commodity. Start focusing on the relationship. Focus on the relationship rather than the sale, rather than the investment, rather than the insurance policy, rather than the makeup, the skincare. Focus on the relationship. What are you doing right now for and with people? Like in my case, it maybe went on hold, canceled, can't come to the restaurant, can't do the facial, can't get into the office to get this investment done. What are you doing? What are you doing for those people? And I'm gonna make a, a hard statement here, please, because it's easy to do. Do not resent these people. Do not resent these people. Resentment is like poison. And resentment only hurts the person who resents. We have to understand, and I know every one of you do, people are hurting for many reasons right now. So they didn't necessarily not come to you because they didn't want to. People have to understand during this time that they can trust you, that you will be there for them no matter what. And I've told folks here, I could care less if my doors had to close tomorrow and they had to put a lock on this place. I will always be there for you and anybody that needs help, however I can. Okay? They need to know they can trust you. So, strengthen the relationships now. Show a little empathy. Show a little compassion. People need people right now. And they need people that they know they can trust. So forget about the commodity and focus on the relationships. Forget the sale. Focus on creating value in your life. In time of need, people are looking for what? Trust, sense of community, and the value of that. What can you bring to people of value that creates resources for them? What can you do? When you do this, down the road, people will know they can trust you. They know you're a person of good faith. And they'll know when times get tough, you will be there. So I think we really need to focus on the value that you can bring to others. Yeah, it might be some sort of a call to action, okay? Or just something in good faith. That's okay. There's, not, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. So forget the sale. Forget what it's doing for you. And create value for folks right now. Create the value. This, this one's hard for some people because it's going to mean a change in the person. It's going to mean some sort of a change in the person. Forget your losses and focus on your opportunities. I told you I was going to talk about a lot of things to forget today. Forget your losses and focus on the opportunities. So people right now are losing jobs. 
Um, people right now have either lost businesses or in the process of losing them. Maybe um, as business owners, you've had to furlough people, lay people off. You've lost payroll. You lost events. You lost vacations. You lost airline tickets. You lost, you lost, you lost. Forget the losses. You can't control any of that. You can't control any of that. You have to focus on the opportunities. So some examples of that. Um, you know, some of us have taken a brick and mortar. You know, it's not existing right now. And we've turned it into online. Is it the same thing? Yeah. It's just not the same thing as you know it. So yeah, it's a little different. You got to pivot. Remember, we talked about pivoting. We had to go to online training. We had to build a video database. We've had to reach out to students. It's a great opportunity to strengthen the relationships. Or how about if you just work out. I can't tell you how many people the first week, boom, everything was gung ho. Week two, yeah, yeah, I'm getting a couple of them in. Week three, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just not motivated. Mm. This is a great time to focus on your opportunities. Strengthen the community relationships. Build your online database. Reach out to your clients. See how they're doing. What can you do for them right now? Learn to be disciplined in your mindset to work out, eat better. Some people are taking the opportunity to go right back where they were. Learn about the people you live with. I gotta tell you something. In my household, I already know who runs my household, and it ain't me. But I learned something interesting about Kathleen. And this is going to sound really weird, and she'd probably kill me for saying it. So, honey, I hope you're not online. But we are guests in her house. So what do I mean by that? I'm out of the house at 3.30 in the morning, guys. Sometimes I don't come home till 7.30 at night, 8 o'clock. Isabella's at school most of the time. And Vinny, he's usually gone by 6.30 in the morning and with school and baseball, and you know, he's not home till 7, 8 o'clock at night. So Kathleen's in that house doing her thing all day long. Well, here comes this pandemic and now we're all home and we all bring our personalities into one house. That is very, very tough to deal with. So I really have to step back and try to understand where she's coming from during this time and then trying to balance the kids' personalities. You know, it's so funny when Isabella and Vinny were young, they never, ever had an argument. I mean, kid you not, never had an argument. But now their personalities are so different, and they don't really argue, but it's, it's one trying to post up on the other and, and, and see each other's point. And Isabella has a San Francisco attitude, and Vinny's got an Eldorado Hills attitude. And they're both trying to show their attitude. And me, of course, I'm just a saint, so <laughs> I'm easy to live with. <laughs> Why do you think I'm here at the office right now? Oh my God. But no, seriously, you have an opportunity. To, again, forget the losses. Focus on the opportunity to learn about the people you live with. See who they really are, how they've changed, and how you can make that relationship better. How about the people you work with? 
How are they doing when you talk to them online? How are they doing when you respond? They respond to you in a text. I bet you can get a different vibe than when they're right in front of you. You know, it's funny. Uh, the CEO of um, uh, what is that? Uh, I'll, I'll think of it here in a second. But he had a great saying. He said, "Every time I interview somebody, I always walk them to their car." I was like, "Walk them to their car? Why?" He says, because I know when they sit in front of me, they're going to be pristine and they're going to have their ties and their dresses and everything's going to be really cool. But when I walk them to their car, if it's a mess inside that car, I won't hire them. He said, because the way a person does one thing is usually the way they do everything. So when they're sitting in front of me, it's just a mask. But when I walk them to their car, it tells me a little bit more of the story. Okay, so again, you learn about people. Even people that you work out with. How many of you have reached out, and just think about this, to the people who you have a relationship with in the facility, just to see how they're doing. Are they working out? Because that phone call from us means one thing, but that phone call from you means another. Forget about your losses. You can't control that. Focus on your opportunities. This is a chance to build longer, stronger relationships. And these are things you're building now that you can use forever. Forever. We are in a time of change. And when this is over, and we don't know when it's going to be, Things aren't going to be the same. So we need to really dig into that right now. But things aren't going to be the same. So forget your losses. Focus on your opportunities. <clears throat> this one's a tough one. Forget the difficulties and focus on your progress. And I really, you know, I really want to kind of kind of go back to the beginning for a second. I want to reiterate, we are in the new way. Forget about your own stuff and focus on others. Forget about your commodity, focus on your relationships. Forget the sale, focus on creating your value. Forget your losses, focus on your opportunities. Number six, forget the difficulties and focus on your progress. Forget your difficulties and focus on your progress. So what has been difficult? Well, I can tell you from here, um, it's, a, it's difficult and it's a realization. The difficult part was taking a brick and mortar where you were able to shake hands and kiss babies every day. And all of a sudden now, you had to move the entire operation online. Well, I can tell you right now, if it wasn't for my team, this battleship would have been sunk weeks ago. Because for me and IT stuff, ooh boy, I'm still in the brick and mortar. So getting online learning was crazy difficult. And then God bless Gabe and the team, because I'll tell you what, man, they're, they're putting countless hours in to try to um, make it better each time. Zoom operations, what I'm doing right now. Facebook Live, how about for restaurants trying to set up DoorDash, do out, take, take out stuff where people used to just come into the restaurants, sit down, order a meal. It was easy. So right now, what I'm gonna ask people to do is stop focusing on what your difficulties were. I mean, in a matter of days, think about what your accomplishments are. Look at what you've accomplished. In a matter of days, 
a lot of you have come up with what? New online stuff, online programs, businesses, takeout processes, setting up the DoorDash. What you're learning about your families being home. When you look at what you've accomplished, it's probably a whole lot more than what you ever thought your difficulties were. When you look at it that way, when you look at not the difficulties, being a mom trying to educate your kids, sitting at home, or a dad, look at how far you've come. Look at what you've learned. And when you look at it that way, your mental, your physical, your emotion, emotional, and your spiritual aspects of life will be so much stronger and you will feel so much better during these times. And it doesn't mean that every day you're not going to slip back a little bit, but you have to be able to catch yourself as you're slipping. And you have to learn to forget your difficulties. And look how far you've really come. It's tough, but it absolutely can be done and it is being done daily. Here's a good one. Forget about the future. Focus on today. Guys, everything changes. I'm still trying to admit people in, so excuse me. Everything changes. So what do I mean by that? Um, before I had to shut down, let me tell you kind of how fast things change. Before I had to shut down, I had a fundraiser set up. And it was for leukemia and lymphoma. Within almost 48 hours of setting up the fundraiser, I had to shut a gym down. And in 24 hours after that, states were shutting down. Would stay in and stay home orders. That's how fast things changed. That's how fast it changed. In the past, remember I said in the beginning here, the new way? In the past, we were thinking about the future. What were our stocks doing? What was our bank account doing? How were we setting up our retirement? And literally, in three to four weeks, everything has changed. At this point, we don't know what the future is going to look like. It is going to be different. It is going to be different. It is going to change. So how do you deal with that? Here's a great, 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 simple solution. Focus on today. Just focus on today. Just focus on one day at a time. Make your days productive. If you look in your days right now, and nobody has to enter in the chat here, how many of you are going to bed later and sleeping longer? Now, they do say one of the best ways to beat this virus or any virus is to get rest because your immune system builds up at night stronger, okay? But how many of you are doing that? How many of you used to get out of bed at five o'clock in the morning, now you're getting out of bed at eight o'clock in the morning? How many of you get out of bed at eight o'clock in the morning by the time you have your coffee and do the things you're milling around doing, it's now nine or 10 o'clock and half the morning is gone? Forget the future. Focus on today. One day at a time, make your days productive and you make them productive by planning your days out and staying disciplined. 
We talked about the whole discipline thing in the very beginning when all this started. How many of you moved away from that? I purposely called people yesterday as I was doing a walk with a 20 pound vest on to get a workout in to make sure I was staying disciplined to what I do and what I'm asking you to do. Last night, nothing's changed. Last night, as you, you guys know me, last night was pizza night. Focus on one day. Focus on planning out your day, staying disciplined to your day, and being productive in your day. Because the decisions that you're making each day are setting you up for how you want to come out of this. Okay? I've talked to some people on their workouts. Some people had not been squatting or how, and however you can do it, guys. Okay, I don't care if it's body weight. I really don't care. But I talked to one person and they said, yeah, you know, I, I, I took a weight and I did my squats and I couldn't walk for two days. You know what that tells me? For two weeks, you haven't been squatting. What are the five different movement patterns in your body, guys? Push, pull, hinge. Squat and carry. You do them every day of the week. And as we age, those movement patterns get weaker. And we have trouble sitting, standing, crawling, getting out of bed. So how productive are you being in your day? Forget the future. We don't know what it's going to hold. We don't know what it's going to look like. We can't control it. Again, the decisions you're going to make today and how productive you are in your planning and how disciplined you are will affect tomorrow's outcome. And again, I'm going to share with you what are the goals you want at the end of all of this? What are the goals you want at the end of all of this? Think about that. Now, again, this one's tough. This one's tough. Because again, it's you gotta you gotta look inside yourself. You gotta dig deep. Forget who you were. Forget who you were. Um, what can we do now to form the person that we really want to be when we come up out of this? Again, this is focusing on your opportunities. For me. I'm better because I'm learning a little bit more on the IT front. I'm learning a little bit more about what's happening in my own household. I'm learning a little bit more about my coaches. I learn a little bit more about business associates, who they are, what they step up to do what they're willing to give up and sacrifice, what they're not. It's time to move away from the person that you were. I was, you are. We are not the same based upon the current events, folks. If you haven't noticed, we're not the same. Last week I talked about pivoting. Well, it's time to pivot. What new skills have you or are you developing to become that person you want to be? For me, it's the online stuff. It's, for me, reaching in a little bit more spiritually. For others, it could be learning how to cook dinner, how to do wash. Forget who you were and become who you really want to be. Seize the opportunities. Seize the opportunities. I mean, again, what you do today will be changed in the outcome for you tomorrow and for the people around you. Uh, next one's kind of cool. Forget about your events. Control the controllables. I talked about that last week. 
control the controllables. So what, 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 what events am I talking about? Well, <laughs> how about COVID-19? That big event, right? It's changed the way we do everything. Um, we watch the TV every day. We listen for all these updates. We spend so much time looking at our phones and the news, calling the banks, listening to the president. Well, here's what we know. That changes daily, minute by minute. Forget the event. Focus on how you respond to the event. Focus on how you respond to the event. Forget the event and control how you respond to the event. And that's any event. Any event at home, any event in the community. I mean, long lines at the stores, have to wait outside. I mean, a lot of things have changed. But what new skills do you now have that you didn't have before? And how are you responding? How are you responding as a business owner? How are you, Amory? Hello, Emory. How are you responding as a family member? And how are you responding as a friend? Think about that. What new skills do you have now that you didn't have before to help you respond to all these things better? And that doesn't mean, guys, you can't get frustrated. You can't get angry. Doesn't mean, yeah, Caroline, <laughs> patience. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> Woo! Gabe, don't even comment on that, please. Um, patience is a good one. But what new skills that you can take with you forever in every event, every situation that you're going to be able to look back on? See the opportunity and use those skills. Focus on what you're going to do for others and how you're going to respond to them upon their reactions to you. So um, that's, that's, that's a big one. So forget your events, whatever those events are. Okay, how are you responding? to those events is, is really um, what matters and what new skills you have to deal with that. Oh, this is a good one. Forget what's missing. Forget what's missing and focus on what's available. So what's missing? I missed the gym. I miss my workplace. I miss my favorite restaurants. I miss, I miss, I miss. Again, we gotta focus on the controllables. Folks, let me be the agent of reality for you. There's takeout out there. You can still go to your favorite restaurant and get takeout. You can still do every single workout online, at least with us. You can still get online with your students and teach. We can still have Zoom meetings and drink coffee. Hopefully everybody's got theirs. We can still Have FaceTime and invite others in to have FaceTime with you. We can do all of that, can't we? Shake your head yes. Shake your head yes. So focus on what's available to you and what's not available to you. Don't focus on what's not available to you. There's no timetable to this, guys. I'd like to be able to tell you that by May 1st, it's, everything's going to be all better. 
By May 15th, everything's going to be all better. By June 15th, everything's going to be all better. And I don't know if Tim is still on, but I know he he's heard a little bit of rumblings, you know. Um, and Tim, if you're still on, if you want to feel free to talk a little bit about that, that's great. But guys, it's it's don't put a timestamp on things. Don't put a timestamp on things, okay? With the fact that we still have so many things available to us, not the way they were, there are people out there who still want your value. They want your value as a friend. They want your value as a restaurant. They want your value as a gym, okay? Focus on what's available to you rather than focusing on what is not available to you. This next one is probably one of my favorites um, and my little scoop on it. Um, forget your complaints. Forget about your complaints and focus on your gratitude. Forget about your complaints and focus on your gratitude. Remember one thing, and I, talk, I think I talked about it Wednesday. If you're complaining, you can't focus on gratitude. It's hard. It's hard. It's just like if you hate, you can't love. The, mo the body doesn't have the ability to do two emotions like that. It's very difficult, folks, to be stuck in a house. But thank God we're not stuck in a house. You can go outside. There's other countries right now who can't. Forget your complaints and focus on your gratitude. Be grateful. I'll tell you right now, guys, I can't tell you how grateful I am for every student in this gym that is supporting us right now. I can't tell you. I, go, I wake up in the morning and I go to sleep at night with that gratefulness on my heart. And I know there's other business members out there who feel the same way. I'm grateful for the time that I have with my family because I realized what I wasn't doing before and that was spending that time. I'm grateful for the dinners that I have with them. The time to catch up with my daughter and to really see who she's becoming and my son. I'm grateful for the fact that we get to play games and do things together. You know, Isabella and I are in the garage doing kettlebells together. All right. Vinny show me his online schooling stuff that he's got to do. Is it perfect? I guess you got to measure your standard of what you consider to be perfect. And not complain. I'm grateful for the conversations when I go out for a walk, either with Kathleen or Isabella or Vinny, of the conversations I get to have with them. Things that I was, that's what I was missing. Or the hug. Right? These are things we need to communicate every day. We need to express it. One to yourself and two to others every single day. On this Easter Sunday weekend, be grateful for your family, for the online masses and churches and, and uh, sermons that you're able to hear. Without the good Lord above, folks, we can't do any of this. So I'm telling you right now, be grateful for what you have. You don't need more things. It's what got us in trouble in the first place. And let those people in your life know, whether they're workout buddies, whether they're family members, whether they're business associates, whether they're um, just people on the street, wave high to them. 
It's okay to do that. It's okay to do that. It's okay to know who your neighbors are. In fact, you should know who they are. So get back to the things that we've gotten so far away from. We have that opportunity. And last but not least, you know, Gabe sent me a, a good clip on digging deep the other day. And things are hard with no real end in sight, folks. Things are hard with no real end in sight. But we know it will end. And we know when it ends, it's going to be different. It's okay. The world is in the, in the process of writing itself and writing itself of good doing and wrong doings. And I think in the end of all this, we're going to see some of that. It doesn't make a difference. Control what you can control. Think about the simplicity of the past and how far away from that we've gotten. So let me give you some examples of that. The humble home. Man, there's some homes out there right now. People could take a vacation from each other. And you know what I'm talking about? 10,000 square feet. Mama's at one end of the house. Papa's at the other end of the house. You can even get a chance to say hi to each other. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong. If you can do it, that's great. But is that really what you want? How about dinner at the table with your family? Learning about their day. What did they do? What's new in their life? Who's new in their life? Instead of cooking three different dinners, different times of the day and night, being able to say hi as you pass through in the hallway or give a kiss on the forehead as you're leaving at night. Think about that, the simpler times. How about food? I can remember the time when we had a four ounce burger and a seven ounce drink. Is it just a nice surprise? Please mute, folks. It's easy to mute. The simpler times. How about simple backyard conversations? Where did we evolve? Think about today before all this happened. I already mentioned the several different dinners at different times. Home so large you could take a vacation from one another. Mom and dad not getting home until bedtime, not to mention the dining and fast food extravaganzas. But those are all important things. Don't get me wrong. They really are. You can still do those things. Some of them. But we're being forced to write ourselves. So the last thing I'm going to say, it's time to dig deep. I mentioned that Gabe sent this to me. And probably the best way to, um, to uh, the way it was explained is a good way. It's like the last rep that you feel like you can never get in a workout and then you have a spotter there and you're just grunting and groaning but you get it or the last mile of a marathon or the last two miles of a 72 mile 100 mile bike race or the countless hours of rebuilding that business or maybe the hardest one is writing a bad relationship making it right you have to dig deep you got to find something out about yourself. So you're in a time where we don't have an ending. And it's time to dig deep. It's time to get up Monday morning and plan your day early. It's time to be productive. It's time to forget about your own stuff and focus on others. It's time to forget about your commodities and focus on your relationships. 
It's time to forget about the sale and focus on creating your value. It's time to forget your losses and focus on your opportunities. It's time to forget the difficulties and focus on your progress. Forget about the future and focus on today. Forget who you were, but who are you going and want to be? And some things have to change. Forget the event and control the controllables. You can't control what the president's going to say. You can't control what the banks are going to do. You can't control that. You can only control what they give to you and how you respond to it. Forget what's missing and focus on what's available to you. Forget about your complaints and focus on your gratitude. Folks, it's time to dig deep. It's time to dig, to dig real deep. Look inside yourself. You have a great weekend, however you're gonna spend it with your families, whether it's on Zoom, I don't, I don't know. But it's time to give grace and thanks to what you have in your lives, to make them better tomorrow. But you've gotta take care of yourselves first. So this week when the coaches call, or I call, the last thing I wanna hear, oh, I'm not motivated. Basically, what you're saying is, you're not important. I don't want to take care of myself. Well, if you don't take care of yourself, I promise you, you're not taking care of your business, and you're not taking care of those around you, and you're waiting for those around you to take care of you. I got me for one. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm always going to take care of others but I gotta take care of me first. I gotta make sure I'm healthy because then I can't take care of others. So if you're sitting there and you're one of those woe is me people, it's time to pivot, it's time to change, and it's time to dig deep. So it's about 8.50. Um, I don't want this time to go by again without me thanking those who have given me and my son birthday wishes uh, last week. Um, I always get to tell people that uh, with him being born on my birthday or now his birthday was probably the best present of my life. Um, and I get to not have a birthday anymore. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I don't have to think about age and all that good stuff. Although my body tells me it every day. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, the community that we are building here together is just phenomenal. Just phenomenal. And folks, I'm always going to talk about some uncomfortable things. I'm okay. I, I feel okay doing that. Okay? Because I'm no different than you are. But if I can be a catalyst of change and to make a difference, that's all I set out to do. And I think as community leaders, we have to stand up and do that. And if we can't take care of the things that I just talked about today, then we, don't, they, we shouldn't be standing up calling ourselves leaders. Whether it's in your home, whether it's in the community, whether it's in your businesses or whatever it is. The next thing I want to talk about is just enjoying this weekend, this Easter weekend, because we have so much to be grateful for. And we're blessed. So please spend some time, quality time, whether it's on the phones, the computers, or right there in your own household with the family members and celebrate and celebrate. We have such great things ahead of us. And yes, this is going to end. And yes, our community here is going to be here. We're doing everything we can to make sure it's here for you when we get back. In the meantime, we have given you workouts on your own Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and we're doing live workouts every Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. There's absolutely zero reason other than the fact 
that you don't value yourself enough to take care of yourself that you're not doing it. And I'm telling you right now, during these times, you absolutely have got to take care of yourself because when we come out, this thing is still going to be there. It's still going to be there. Okay. You guys are, are in, in my eyes, warriors and heroes. You really are. Okay. And I love every one of you. And I mean that I don't give that away freely. So, um, guys, happy Easter to everybody. Um, if there's any questions you have for me, I'll hang on for a minute or two. And uh, I don't want to, I don't want to take up a lot of your time. I hope, hopefully this was valuable. We'll try to get it pushed out uh, to the rest of the population so they can uh, listen to it today. Uh, Wednesday, I'll be Facebook live again. Um, I'll probably be on the business account of Facebook. Um, so that's where you can find me. And we'll have a great topic um, for you on Wednesday. Uh, in the meantime, Take care of your families. Take care of yourselves. Great to see and hear you guys out there this morning. I love, even if I just see the names, I'm excited because um, I know our community is strong. And with you, that's the only way we can stay strong. Thank you so much for all your contributions and um, all your input. And uh, I just look forward to seeing everybody and talking to folks this week. So thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll hang tight real quick. And um, shoot them to me. If not, um, I will see everybody Wednesday. Thanks. Thank you, Vance. You are so welcome. Thank you, Daryl. Have a good one. Hey, you too, brother. Get a workout in today. Yeah, Caitlin's doing the 930 mini band. Yes, she is. It's going to be a good one. Yep, rocking it. Yes. And for folks who don't have bands, you can do it without. Mary, I'm doing it. I'm doing a 932. Awesome. Good. Yeah. And I've been running between four and five miles every day. Good. Take Leo with you. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love you, Vince. I love you too, Leo. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Well, you can go off. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> go off. All right. Thank you, Ben. Take care. I'll see you. Uh, we'll talk this week. Okay. All Thank right. Thank you. Bye. Steph, thank you for being here, brother. I uh, hope all's going well at the house, and happy Easter to you guys. Anne-Marie, same thing. Miss Kim Turbin, miss you guys. <laughs>